you know, truthfully, I had just sort of taken it as a given that, hey, biggest risk factor for melanoma is sun exposure and that's the end of that. But when you actually look closely at the data, you'll see some conflicting stuff. So let's take a look at some of the observational data that look at people who have an occupation that puts them in a very high level of constant UV. So for example, people who work outdoors. And a lot of these studies show that there's no increase and even potentially lower risk of melanoma in outdoor workers than indoor workers. So for one example, and we'll link to all these in the show notes, there was a European case control study that found no association of melanoma with outdoor workers compared to indoor workers, despite the outdoor workers having much more photo damage and having a higher risk of both basal and squamous cell carcinomas. The same is true of a lot of large epidemiologic studies like the Nurses Health Study Part 2, which did not find any association between total UV exposure and melanoma. I find this quite interesting. And, and so there are probably a few reasons for this. It could be that those who are really, really sun sensitive, if you're one of those people, <clears throat> you're probably not spending a lot of time outside and you're probably not getting a job as a roofer. They're going to spend a lot less time outside, but if they're going to have intermittent exposure uh, to the sun, they could get sunburns and they, in fact, may be at a higher risk for melanoma. It's also been proposed that for the people who have the capacity for both a burn and a tan, so these are kind of your, your type threes, your type fours, you know, a consistent low level exposure might have some protective effect in, in what is, is called photo adaptation. So, you know, you get this increased pigmentation or tanning, the skin becomes a little thicker. And again, that's a bad thing when you're thinking about long-term aesthetics, but maybe in the short term, there's some protection. So again, there's a bit of a paradox here because of this increased uh, acquired pigmentation may be photoprotective, but it may be a sign, of course, that UV radiation damage has occurred. It's, it's very difficult here to, to truly make sense of this because there are conflicting data on this, but, but I want people to understand the, the relationship between UV light and melanoma appears more complicated than it does for squamous cell and basal cell carcinomas.